Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with A Place Further Than The Universe episode number 9 reaction. Okay, the previous episode. It was a very interesting episode. Um, I have to say, I did not expect everyone like of them to get so sick and it is understandable because, you know, like they have never gone on a ship somewhere before and this is like they're going to Antarctica. It's a long journey and like i was not aware of the fact that the currents you know start increasing and they also like you know, gave us like a proper explanation why the currents actually increase as we go more towards that place because there's not enough continents to stop the uh, water currents and that's why the water currents increase and the ship moves in a wild way and people who are you know going there for the first time obviously they will get sick and um yeah like it was uh like it, it, it was like a very like you know surprising episode and uh, i knew that they were going to become seasick now like you know eventually but they became completely like you know bedridden and my god that looked really terrifying you know like in, it was like a like whole storm was going on it was not a storm but the like you know the ocean currents were so much it felt like it was a storm and just like it was insane and how like you know they had to actually cope up throughout that whole situation and they cannot even eat they don't have enough you know, appetite to eat but still they need to eat because they need their energy going and the whole fact of like you know them thinking like oh was this, this the correct decision will we be able to make it this is what's happening and uh, you know like the mental pressure the physical pressure everything just but they were able to go through that and win and yeah we are finally at antarctica um and they did say uh like you know i think one of the, who was it I, I don't remember one of them said that uh, oh like now you're going to get land sick because you have been accustomed to the sea now if you like you know, go on land you're going to get, like, get land sick so <laughs> My god i guess that will be another thing that they will have to overcome so yeah let's see what this episode brings this is episode number nine of a uh, place further than the universe so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here think it whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go. wait there the plane what fish tear <laughs> whoa okay she's athletic Oh my god. <laughs> Defining speed. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, this whole thing we saw. It's probably because no because of Shiraz's mom. What? Um, wait, how old are you? What's happening here? How old is he? Like, he's, did he go together with, I don't know, um, okay, um, let's watch first. <laughs> the way she does it just, just, just like, you know, like this. Uh. I thought they were, like, I thought these, like, you know, the, these people are a lot older than them. I thought like 10 or 12 years or something like that. Because they went with her mom, apparently. So, I don't know. And they seem like, like, you know, friends. So, yeah.
Hmm. Okay. Antarctic luster. Oh my god, what? Blizzard arc? High school. Wait. Oh, the captain. Okay. Oh my god. Wait. So the cap Yeah, okay, thank god. I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> Wait, this is voice actor, isn't it? Wait. Wow. Why are you telling this to these kids? <laughs> yeah, like, what was that about? Oh my god. Wow. Wow, okay. Very recently. Oh no. Oh yeah, yeah, they met. <laughs> what? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Oh my god, that'll be awkward, you know? Like, after... <laughs> uh... Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Just left her with him. Uh, with her. Oh, the, she's playing. <laughs> Shopkeeper game or whatever. Um. <laughs> Obviously, she wouldn't know that. Yeah. Oh! That's. Mm, that's that's you know that's that's intelligent you <laughs> yeah we had so much training you know like she had so much training <laughs> Oh, she's talking about the okay, same thing. Wow, the same thing that okay, <laughs> the same conversation. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I also want some answers, you know. Cancel. Oh, so that's what happened. There you go. So she has not been found. <laughs> we have for an interview, you know.
Oh boy. Probably just. <laughs> Well, <laughs> well this will, yeah, this will give us more views, you know, more funding, yeah, more funding. <laughs> what is happening? No, don't do that. Yeah, oh my god. Hmm. Yeah, okay, there you go. I was just talking about this. Like it won't go okay. Cloud. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. The, the guy's like, what's happening here? What am I not getting? Am I, am I dumb? Am I dumb? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay. No, that's not the thing. It just feels awkward talking to her. Hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. <clears throat> oh my god. Wow, it's got her year. Oof. Oh. Oh, penguins. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it is like clouds, you know, you, you cannot express it. It's just a feeling. Just a feeling. The feeling you get when you look at clouds. That feeling. <laughs> Good. Oh, she's skipping the rope. Oh, did she teach her or something? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> They're just standing there. Yeah, that's her decision.
I don't think so. <coughs> Didn't have any choice. Still a part of yeah, that's still a part of her that's kind of you can say blames her. But no, she knows that. Oh my god. <clears throat> What's happening? Icebergs? Fast eyes. Oh. Oh, so we're going to. Oh. Interesting. We're just going to cut through it. Oh, okay. Is that like hot water or something that's like, you know, coming out? Weight of the boat. Icebreaker. <coughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Only place we can go. <laughs> okay. Oh. It's Dongul Island. Oh. Hmm. All right, so okay, okay, in interesting. Okay. Wow, oh my god, look at that. So they're just going and ramming into it, okay. <clears throat> this is hot water, I think. Isn't it? Oh, so are they like, oh, they're using the force to kind of lift itself up? and ram it interesting so the amount of force that the water is like you know putting is strong enough to lift the huge ship oh just like she did oh yep wow Yep, she got miss went missing. <coughs> oh my god. Oh no.
Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Oh my god, how much? <laughs> No. No. <laughs> well, here we are. Oh my god, look at this. Yep. Okay, so finally reached. Oh, it's a brief stop. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's gold. Wow, it's like white all over. Oh. Go. First step that high school girls are actually. I think this is the first time any high school. Student. Yeah. <laughs> okay, everyone at the same time. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone who said that yeah exactly come on record this record this record this record this part <laughs> okay wow all right so we finally reached kind of the short stop i'm guessing we're going to go a little bit more in or something so okay all right so like yeah like like I, I i remember like you know me like in previous few episodes i think i said something about like oh it's either that takako is missing or she has come back but she's like in coma or something um obviously the whole coma thing is not what happened but she is missing and like i don't know why i had this like you know like feeling that oh we might i don't know somehow she survived but nah i, I don't think that's that's what's going to happen obviously because this is like you know like this is antarctica like she got missing over here there's no people that is going to find her you know and rescue her no one like like no people lives here so yeah like it's not like if this was like in some other like an abandoned place or something 
like you know some maybe someone got stranded on an island or something like you know we could have had a little bit hope but this is antarctica we're talking about <clears throat> okay Oh, the, uh, is that the mom's name? I think so, isn't it? Like, um, y Yuzuki's mom? That's her name. <clears throat> okay, um, so yeah, as I was saying, like, this is not like you are abandoned in, uh, like, you know, you washed up in an island, abandoned island, and, you know, like, you're missing and it's not something like that you know like if this was like an island or something where like you know you just washed up and you're missing we could have had a hope you know like oh maybe like you know she survived all these years these two three years i don't know how but somehow maybe there are some inhabitants in the island who found her and you know took care of her like you know these like you know these things could have happened if this was like a middle of an island or something in an inhabited place but this is Antarctica. There is no food grows here. Nothing like you know survives here. No people who's going to like you know rescue you. Nothing. It's nothing. Literally nothing over here. And it's cold. And it's it's this is like a, it's impossible for someone to survive in this in this place at least. So yeah, like I don't think we're you know like she she she's probably like not alive anymore. But it's sad thinking about it, you know, like the way we saw her, ah, like, you know, the way she probably died just alone. But at least she said, like, in the end, she said it's beautiful. Probably looking at the sky. That was a dream. <clears throat> okay. Um, this uh, episode, uh, the first thing is we see, like, you know, the girls just... <clears throat> doing their training you know like increasing their stamina and she she is a lot good at skipping rope than others and this guy i don't remember his name anyways comes in and he's like oh i like you and i'm like what is happening here like how old is he why is he telling this to shirase and <laughs> that was very confusing and then like you know after the opening she, he's like oh i like the captain i'm, I'm like oh thank god like whoa <laughs> i was concerned for a moment like <clears throat> <clears throat> and um okay so <laughs> oh my god so he's like okay i need to get to like you know like i'm telling these to you guys because i've heard that one of you are actually um uh, is actually Mm, Takako's daughter so you must know the captain a lot better than any one of us so he's like oh I need your help I need to get to know more from you what she likes what she dislikes this and that like more information about her love life all that stuff I need to know and <coughs> and I'm like my god like <laughs> you're 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 actually relying on little kids for this like wow <laughs> okay but <coughs> Okay, so now here's where everyone starts asking Shiraz. It's like, yeah, like we are quite curious. What is like you know uh, Gin's actual like you know life, like her personal things and everything, her love life. Does she like someone? Who does she like? Her preferences, this and that. If she knows, and Taka, uh, not Takako, sorry, um, Shirase here says like <clears throat> we never really talked that much, interacted it that much. Both of us were kind of similar. Uh, both of us were a little bit shy no a little bit awkward we didn't talk much um so <clears throat> nothing i i don't know much thing about her and we get little flashbacks here and there where we see like you know takako just going to um <laughs> like, you know shopping and grocery shopping or something and her just leaving um shirase with uh, gin <laughs> and gin is like what am i supposed to do like <clears throat> you know like and <laughs> the, that that scene was funny where <laughs> where um shirase is like the little shirase she's like oh this is like you know like she's kind of guessing she was playing like shopkeeper or something just giving little blocks to her and saying like oh this this cost this much and she's like what did she say here just a sec 
Oh yeah, she's like you shouldn't give money to people you don't know. <laughs> and yeah, she's correct. She says like she's extremely practical, and that's true. You know, she's very practical. <clears throat> and they're like, okay, now you know what? Like our views are going down. You know, we need something juicy. So, <laughs> what best is like you know like stuff can we get than other people's personal <laughs> like you know life? And yeah, like this is really go well, like the views will skyrocket. So let's just go and ask her of her personal, like, you know, life and you know, what she prefers, what she does not like this and that her, if she is interested in someone, all that stuff. And yeah, it'll go really well. <laughs> and like, she's correct, you know, like she's not wrong. Like these type of things do actually people, people actually watches, you know, like people are like very interested in other people's lives. <laughs> That's true. Like, you know, everyone, like, I'm no exception. Like, you know, whenever, like, something juicy like this comes out and, like, you know, like, like something related to someone else, we, all of us just so, so much love it just to watch that. Because it's not concerning us, you know? Like, that's why we just, like, have a blast watching these type of drama or whatever you call them. But, <laughs> just correct, you know, this would probably boost a lot of views. And, <laughs> okay. Now, <clears throat> obviously, Shirase is not comfortable with this. She's like, I never actually ever even talked to her that much. I, I, I cannot do this. And she actually bails out. She's like, nope, I'm not doing this. And all the three other girls go in and they're like, all right, let's get this started, this interview. And just starts asking her awkward questions. <laughs> Random stuff. And and he, she's like, like, no, I'm not doing this. And... Okay, they did get the footage, you know, like her talking about stuff. But I doubt she talked anything about those kind of gossipy, juicy things. <laughs> but okay, now here she says, says something interesting. She also says like, it's like, you know, her personality is like, she, she's someone like a cloud, some, something like a cloud. And like, 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 this is the thing here. Like, every one of us, of them were like, oh, I can understand what she's saying. But I cannot explain it like that's basically it now okay this part where we see the flashback where the three of them were just <coughs> laying down in the garden on the field um Takako says what big clouds okay now Gin says clouds are amazing aren't they you can't grasp them but when you look up they're always there like interesting thing here like you know i can see like this this whole thing with all of them like they are very interested in stuff as the thing that she says like you know you cannot grasp them but whenever you look up you can watch it you can see it and like you know th i think like this is like a similar kind of uh thing which um what's her name takako also feels because she said something about watching the sky in antarctica like the sky the stars you know like all of these things are also something similar to clouds isn't it like you cannot grasp them but whenever you look at the sky they're always there so this whole thing of uh like you know this this thing like i guess this is very common that's why i'm guessing uh, uh gin was also very interested in the whole astronomical observatory plan where like you know the antarctica sky at night is also something that you cannot grasp but it's there if you look at it yeah okay so now everyone's like oh i can understand what she's talking about but i cannot explain and the guy was like what's happening like you know like am i the only one who doesn't understand am i dumb you know like i don't understand now <laughs> like the, the thing that he she said like you know like like clouds it's an interesting thing like as i said like it's something that you cannot explain like like clouds what does that even mean that, that it does not have any literal meaning but you know like if you think about it like that you can feel it you can feel what she's trying to say and this is just something that you could feel like if you actually watch the clouds you will be able to understand what she's trying to say so i guess the thing that the guy and actually needed to do here was just look at the sky and look at some clouds she would understand what they were talking about <laughs> And yeah, like her, his confusion would go away. Oh boy. Okay, now then the I think the captain like she, no, not the captain. Sorry, uh, the guy who who's driving, not driving, but steering the you know ship. 
um he also like you know talks with gin he's like oh did you talk with Yase? and gin is like no she he did not come and i feel like she hates me now this thing here um like <sighs> this is a complicated thing like i'm pretty sure like you know like uh she has said as she herself said like you know she doesn't hate her but there is still a part of her that actually i don't know feels uncomfortable like you know probably blames her as well a little bit because you know like yeah like you, you cannot do anything like she just one day gets to know that her mom never came back from antarctica and gin just came back and you now the thing here is I'm pretty sure that the thing that Gin was like, you know, being afraid of, she says that, oh, I think Shirase hates me. I think that the reason why she says that is because she thinks that she, like, you know, we saw that scene where she said, like, I've actually called off the search. You know, I was forced to do it. Something like that, she says. Um, so I think that was actually what was bothering her. You know? But I don't think that was the, like, you know, thing that actually bothered Shirase. Shirase herself very much knows that you cannot do anything about these type of things. Her mom herself said that, yeah, this is dangerous, but I'm still going to do it. So you cannot blame anyone for this. This is something that her mom knew could have happened. And she still went there, taking full responsibility of her life. And she unfortunately did not come back. So she herself knows that you cannot blame anyone for this and like but still you know it's like the human heart you always try to find someone to blame otherwise you yourself will become miserable. So the only person that she was like you know familiar with at that moment and who was involved with this whole expedition was again and that's why she's probably a little bit you know became uncomfortable around her after that whole situation. And Gin also became uncomfortable because she also probably blamed herself a little bit. And, you know, like the awkwardness started. They were, they were pretty nice, I could say, like acquaintances, friends. They, like, you know, like, I, I guess, I think, um, <clears throat> what's her name? Shiras, uh, not Shiras, sorry. Gin talked with her a lot after that, you know, like we also see her talking with her about, um, what, some stuff, you know, like, what is that? Oh, the whole skipping rope thing, you know, like he converses with her at that moment and a few other times as well. So after that, after that whole Antarctica, like, you know, like thing that happened, her mom never came back. That little friendship or whatever you call, like, which was slowly, slowly growing up, became awkward because none of them were able to know how to interact with each other. And yeah that's basically what happened and both of them kind of stopped talking eventually and it's sad because you know like the only person who you can say is involved with her mom was involved with her mom uh almost up until the end was gin and shirase you know is awkward around gin so i, f I feel like this this it in itself is something that probably uh I don't know made her more uncomfortable and like you know she wasn't able to talk freely like if she was able to talk freely to gin i'm pretty sure she would have been a lot less lonelier because when she talks about that part you know like when she says like all the all the time i just went you know to school and i saw like everything's just going on normally my life is going on normally but the one thing that happened like you know my mom like you know that was part of my normal life i would never be able to get back Get that back and i like you know i did everything normally expect ex expecting something different you know and but mom never came back something like that she says i think wait, wait a minute where is that part that's a very interesting way she actually ex like you know talks about that situation where is it there it is <clears throat> um i lived every one of those days waiting for her to come home but nothing changed. I told myself day after day after day that it was like I was waiting for her to come home. I want to change things. I had just no, not this part. Where is that part? What she talk about? Talks about. All I know is that even though my mom wasn't coming home, the day after day, my life wasn't going to. There you go. My life wasn't going to change. 
like yeah that's the thing you know like as she says like you know i myself i'm unable to i i don't know how to talk to you uh, because at, at that scene you know after that scene they kind of come face to face and shirase and um gin start talking and here shirase actually shows her emotions she's like at first gin asks like do you don't not like me do you hate me because of that whole thing and shirase says like no i don't hate you but you know i i don't know what to say i don't know what what this feeling is you know like i like you know all the time i just expected mom to come back in my normal life me living my normal life day after day but just waiting for mom to come back knowing that it like you know the the result wouldn't change but still waiting for her and yeah that's that's just that whole thing and that's why she wanted so much to come to the place where her mom came and that's why she's here now and okay now this like they kind of talk a little bit and everything just i guess kind of gets solved sorted out i'm i'm pretty sure after this they will be able to talk a lot easier with each other because you know they 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 showed their emotions to each other and that's what you need to do you know like just just talk and uh, i'm i'm glad that this happened because as i said like you know the one person who was really close to her and her mom as well was gin and her being awkward with gin in itself was <clears throat> really lonely you know because she is the only person who she knows uh who was you know like involved and connected with her mom when she was alive and not talking with that one person it must be sad you know so <clears throat> Yeah okay and then like you know something happens like the whole like you know eyes thing kind of have fast eyes i think they call it and um now here's the thing now kana i said something interesting i did not know about this like the whole thing about the war that happened and after like you know the war ended they say like japan was allotted uh like what did they she say like a very like remote part or something okay where is that Of course Japan did not have much influence over the discussion in the end we were allotted East Ongul Island okay this thing East Ongul Island which was even said to be unreachable so this is i'm guessing it's part of antarctica yeah which is said to be unreachable and that's why i cannot you know, as kanai says like oh they we had nothing we couldn't say anything because you know we were the ones who lost so we couldn't say anything and this was just given to us because it was unreachable and yeah so that's why we kind of got pumped up even more we were like yeah we're going to show them like you know like we're going to show them that we can do this even with like you know like this dangerous like you know these uh, unreachable place we're going to reach there and <clears throat> like here like you know same thing come can be said here like in your face you know as they said in the end you know they they showed them through action that yeah we can do this and uh, okay and then we get to the flashback again where uh, gin says like talks about that whole thing uh, they raised large amounts of money from all over the country and the shipwrights worked as hard as they could to design and build a ship what then time and time again they found themselves on the brink of giving up but they dug deeper and deeper just like breaking through the ice yeah this whole thing of just like you know not just giving up and keep going on uh similar to how they were breaking the ice and i was really like you know surprised to see how they were breaking the ice i was not expecting so basically they kind of shoot hot water and because of the force the ship kind of i guess lifts up interesting that so much amount of force you have to actually give for that huge heavy ship to actually lift up and you lift up and just crash into the ice and do it again and again until the you know ice just breaks apart and you can go on your own way and another interesting thing here we can see like the whole parallel that they're drawing here we see uh shirase as well just after that part thing i like you know that uh, conversation just trying to um you know skip rope over and over again even if she's tripping but i guess eventually she was able to do it as good as she's able, she's able to do now and here like i guess this like this was one of the most saddest part of this episode where we see the last scene of the flashback where takako um where gin is talking in the walkie talkie and she's like uh Ta- takako where are you and in the end there's like one or two word that came out and it was just like 
oh it's beautiful and i feel like that's where she died you know most probably that's where takako died and Gin also realized that like they weren't able to found to find the body but it's apparent what happened after that it's impossible for someone to survive in antarctica like it's impossible like how could you even do that so yeah and okay and then we see her just staring at the eyes you know like thinking about takako most probably uh, the guy comes in and he thought about you know like talking to her at that moment but then after seeing like she was crying and sobbing he just went back and just started drinking and just <laughs> Uh, okay, what was the girl's name? The the lunch lady. Um, what's her name? Yumiko. Yumiko. Okay. <laughs> but she's like you know kind of consoling him, and she's like, oh, just like you know, next time try someone who you can reach actually, and he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen, you know, like he was drunk first of all, number one. Number two, like you know, he she was just in front of her, him, and he's just like, yeah, like <laughs> and Yumuka's like, what the hell did I get into now? <laughs> oh my god, that was funny. Alright, and then we finally reached, I guess this is like a little stop they're going uh, to take and yeah like they just jump all together like at first like they were like she you do it because you know you're the one who's most passionate for it he's like no like we all are in this together and each of us deserves the same amount of um you know uh what do you call it uh, have the same amount of right to do it you know uh so let's just go in all together so just they grab each other's hands and just jumped off all at the same time and yeah so I guess this is like the first time high school girls actually put their step in Antarctica. So they, they maybe they made a world record or something. I don't know if there's a record for this. But obviously this is like a very like, you know, new thing I'm guessing. And <laughs> the first thing that Shirase does is she's like haha I knew it. like you know there you go like everyone just laughed at me when we do they said this before and look at us now like you know in your face and <laughs> And even all of them, you know, like the Shirase, uh, not Shirase, Gin and all the other crew members, they were also like in your face because they also went through the same thing, you know, like because of budget and everything. I'm sure all the people, all the crew member, everyone, even their family member and everyone probably said to them, just don't go like, you know, like it, it, it's not worth it or something like that. Or you cannot do it. It's in, in, in impossible or something like that. So for them as well, this, this in your face is also a, an appropriate uh you know like thing that they could say at this moment now and they were also like yeah in your face <laughs> i really hope they recorded that part shirase just talking like that and actually uploaded that on <laughs> on the internet that would get a lot of views you know <laughs> like the title would be like high school girl i don't know like just uh you know like unleashes all her rage that she has built up after reaching Antarctica or something like that. <laughs> uh. Okay. Uh. Now, in the end, after the end credits, there's like a message that comes in. You have a new message from Shiraishi Tamiko-san, which I think is probably uh, the, uh, Yuzuki's mom's name, isn't it? Like, I remember Yuzuki's title is Shiraishi. So it's probably Yuzuki's mom who's messaging her. Yeah, we'll see. Anyways, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. This is my reaction to episode number nine of A Place Further Than the Universe. That was a really great episode and we are almost at Antarctica finally. Next episode will probably be us exploring Antarctica. I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know and I'll check them out. So yeah, that was it. And thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week with another episode of A Place Further Than The Universe. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.